Welcome to Jamaican History Lesson with me, your girl, Ticia, The Great Devon House Part 2. Long and short. So do you know why it's called Devon House? It was built in an area spanning from St. Andrew's Hospital all the way down to Halfway Tree St. Andrew's Parish Church. And this section is known even today as Devon's Pen. What a way them love use the word pen in Jamaica. A people are cat Olivia. Come to think of it, Grant's Pen, Cockburn Pen, May Pen. I'm just saying, if you have any other pens in Jamaica that you know of, comment and share, no? Anyway, so George Stabell was no doubt a trendsetter. He had amassed a great amount of wealth for himself and was Jamaica's first black millionaire who built the famous Devon House. But wait, hold up. Let me just say George is a man because the man would have been valued over $29 million today. Not in price, okay. Remember, we're talking about shillings and pounds back then. So yeah, let's put some respect on his name. Also, slavery just mashed up in 1838 and black people did a suffer. So, as I was saying, from St. Andrew's Hospital, Abbey Court Apartments, YMCA, these places once fell under George's ownership and were constructed after the selling off of the original Devon House expansive property. Devon House was also up to de be demolished itself, but was spared and listed as a national heritage site of Jamaica, thanks to the late Edward Siaga. Oh, and to give you more drama, the strip that Devon House is located was and still is considered prime real estate. It was known back then as the Millionaire Strip, a little fact that grieved people like Lady Musgrave. Mm. Back then... <laughs> In the 1800s, Lady Musgrave requested her husband, the then governor of Kingston, to build her a new road, which was named after her, Lady Musgrave, because she couldn't bear driving her horse and buggy past George's grand wealth and beautiful house. Yeah, bad men are come from long time people. If you must know, George was married and had children. And that entire family, they're all buried in the cemetery of St. Andrew's Parish Church in Halfway Tree. History nice, no? So if you want to learn more, tour the mansion yourself and you will get the full information. But make sure you stop in at our store at shop number 13 before you leave. And let me just give you like a brother. The Rev store and all the stores there was the sleeping quarters of his help. George Stabell's help, aka housekeepers. And the bakery that you know now as the brick oven is the actual oven of George and his family. The kitchen that cooked his meal. Yo, that's so cool. But I wonder if any of the help of them that sleep around with each other back in the 1881 now was stored though. Oh, that is a creepy thought. <laughs> anyway, catch you next time as we explore Jamaica's juicy stories of the past. Bye.